عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته. I was worried he'd put you to sleep, you know, close your eyes at the end of a long session, so subhan al khaliq. My beloved brethren and sisters, can I ask you for a favor, please? Can everyone kindly stand up, just stretch a bit, and then I will say takbir. And then standing up, I want you to do that whole fist pump thing, you know, like. So you say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, like three times. And Allah forbid if you do it wrong, we'll keep repeating till you get it right, inshallah. So takbir. I've seen it done better. Takbir. Oh, that was so beautiful. Just once more, inshallah. Serious. Takbir. Please take a seat, my dear brothers and sisters. Alhamdulillah. الحمد لله العظيم الخبير المتعالي الحمد لله الذي لا تحجبه ظلمات الليالي الحمد لله الذي أرسل جبال العوالي سبحانه من إله عظيم يغفر الذنوب ولا يبالي لا إله إلا الله بها نحيا وبها نموت وبها نلقى الله وبها نوالي وأشهد أن عظيمنا وقدوتنا ومولانا قرة عيني محمد ابن عبد الله عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله أرسله كافة للناس بشيرا ونذيرا وداعيا إلى الله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا فبلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة فكشف الله به الغمة وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى أتاه اليقين فصلوات ربي وسلامه عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله My beloved brethren, we have been here for two days and thinking and remembering, reflecting and reminiscing of the days of the Prophet. So my topic at this hour is especially difficult because his memory is fresh at the forefront of our heads. But I just want to take you back quickly. When Islam started, it was Ramadan. And the Prophet is 40 years old. And as the days went by, and he went through the struggles and the strives and striving. You heard through this conference that he lived his night and day preaching, promoting, propagating the one true deen of Islam. In that path, he was insulted, he was abused, his person was attacked, his companions were tortured, Sumayya was executed, the battles were waged, he was kicked out of his home. Uh, he went through a lot. And as the years went by, and now he's in Medina, Islam slowly starts to take root and grow from strength to strength. And now we have reached the 10th Ramadan after Hijrah. So the Rasul was a prophet for 13 years in Mecca, then migrated to Medina. He's in Medina. 10 years have passed. He is in the 10th Ramadan. And the tradition was that every Ramadan, Jibreel would come and teach the Prophet the Quran, and the Rasul would recite the Quran to Jibreel. And then this Ramadan, something different happened. Jibreel came, taught the Prophet the Quran, the Rasul recited, and then towards the last 10 days of I'tikaf, as in the 10 days of I'tikaf, the Rasul saw a dream that Ya Muhammad, 
what you're seeking is ahead of you, extend your i'tikaf. So he extended another 10 days. Jibreel came again, recited the Quran again. And understand now he is 63 years or towards the end of six, 62nd year. Old age has come. The heart starts to think about when will I meet my Lord? The deen has become a success. The peninsula has become Muslims. The thought will come that the mission is done. I will be meaning to meet my Lord soon. And now the hint came. And the Rasul thinks to himself, why twice this year? And in his heart of hearts, he understood that it is the heaven's desire to make extra sure that the perfect Quran is left behind. But the hearts of prophets are huge, so he didn't go and advertise this, that I think this is what will happen. He just kept it. Around this time, he sends the famous Sahabi, the one who has the honor that the Rasul tells him, Ya Mu'adh, I love you. He sends Mu'adh, Ya Mu'adh, go to Yemen. Manage the affairs of the Muslims. Teach them their deen. Be their mentor and guide. So Mu'adh gets on his mount and the Rasul walks with him. He walks with him to the precipice of the city. And there the scholars say he turned around. Salawatu Rabbi wa salamuhu alayhi. Looking towards Medina. So that Mu'adh is here and he can't see his face. And then the Rasul says, Ya Mu'adh. Innaka asa alla talqani ba'da aami hadha. I am sending you on a mission, O oh Mu'adh. But it might be that you will not see me after this year again. وَلَعَلَّكَ أَن تَمُرَّ بِمَسْجِدِهِ وَقَبْرِي And you might return and find my masjid and my qabr. And Mu'adh understood and Mu'adh felt. The hadith says, فَبَكَى Mu'adh. So Mu'adh started to cry. They loved him more than life itself. And the scholars say he wasn't looking at Mu'adh because tears were rolling down his face too. So he came back. Ramadan's finished. Messengers were sent out. Go far and wide. Tell the new Muslims that this year the Rasul intends to perform Hajj. Can you imagine? The peninsula has fallen to Islam. The talk of every house, as the Prophet said, and this verse came, and the Rasul did this, and this is what he is. He is the hero of it. everyone talks about him, but not everyone has seen him. And now the message goes out that come, the Rasul is going to Hajj, join him. There's an excuse to be in the presence of the majesty of the Rasul. So they flocked to Medina. A hundred thousand camped outside the city. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam waits until Saturday, four days to go from Dhul Qa'dah and prays the Salat of Zuhur, then gets on his mount and moves towards Dhul Hulayfa to wear the Ihram and go towards Hajj. And the hundred thousand follow with him. He camps in Zil Hulayfa, sleeps the night there, wakes up in the morning. He puts the ihram on, gets on his mount. They pray Zuhur, gets on his mount. They move towards the Hajj of the house of the Dhul Arsh al Majid. And Jabir ibn Abdullah says, The Rasul is seated on his mount, on his camel. And I looked ahead of him. Ila madda basari. So far as my eyes could see. In front of the Rasul, there were Muslims riding or walking. And I looked at his right. 
And so far as my eyes could see, there were people riding and walking, and on his left and behind him. And the Rasul is on his mount. His eyes are on Jibreel. Jibreel shows him how to perform Hajj. And the Muslims are looking at the Rasul. And the Rasul says, Take the rituals of Hajj from me. Muslims, take the rituals of Hajj from me. For I do not know if I will be on these plains with you ever again. It must tug at the strings of the heart. The hearts must have skipped a beat. But they follow the Rasul. They perform the Hajj. And 120,000 now have gathered along the way. He performs the Hajj. The day of Arafat comes. His tent is pitched in the Namirah. He gathers the people. He stands to give his timeless khutbah, parts of which he says, Inna dima'akum wa amwalakum wa a'radakum haramun alaykum ka hurmati yawmikum hadha fi shahrikum hadha fi baladikum hadha O Muslims, your blood is sacred, your wealth is sacred, your honor is sacred. Muslims, the blood of a Muslim is sacred. Muslims, the wealth of a Muslim is sacred. Muslims, the honor of a Muslim is sacred. My dear brothers here and those who listen to this around the world, even a wretched child takes up the dying message of a father. This is the dying wishes of the Rasul. Oh my Ummah, do not extend, do not dare extend a hand against your fellow brother. Make sure you don't extend the hand of abuse against the wealth, the honor, the blood of a Muslim. And today, how sad it is, is that the blood of a Muslim is being shed, not by those that are not of this persuasion, but those that are of this faith. If we were to hearken unto this one message of the Prophet, it would be sufficient for your success and salvation. And then he gave them advice with regards to their women. Muslims, be good to your women. And then, after giving a series of messages, time is not on my side. Then the Rasul says, you will be asked about me in the court of the Zularsh al-Majid and Fa'alun lima yurid. So what will you say about me? So they said, we will say, that بلغت الرسالة وأديت الأمانة ونصحت الأمة You conveyed the message You delivered the amana And you advised the nation So the Rasul points towards the heavens And then brings it down to them Says Allahumma fashhad O Allah bear witness That they have testified that I have conveyed the message I have delivered the responsibility. I have advised the Ummah. It says, Allahumma fashhad. Oh Allah, bear witness. Allahumma fashhad. And he did it thrice. And as he finished, Jibreel came with the verses. Al-yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakum al-islam deena. This day your religion has been completed. This day the religion has been perfected. I have conferred my bounties upon you and I have chosen Islam as a religion for you. The next day is Yawmun Nahr. It's the day of sacrifice. The Rasul gathered the people again the same message and then towards the end of it, Jibreel comes with these verses. إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفره 
إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَّابًا When the help of Allah came and evident victory, and you saw mankind enter the religion in groves and in multitudes, now turn your focus towards your Lord and repent and atone. And, and Allah and the Rasul hearing the message and the Rasul knows the hints of the Zul Arsh al Majid. He asks Jibreel, says, Ya Jibreel, it is as though the Lord is giving me the condolences of my own death. So the Mu'addab Jibreel, the decent Jibreel says, وَلَلْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنَ الْأُولَىٰ O Muhammad, the Akhirah is better for you than here. Now having almost a confirmation, he leaves Hajj and comes back to the city of Medina. The month of Hajj finishes. The next month is Muharram. And the Rasul does his normal duties and tasks. And, and then the month of Safar comes. And at the beginnings of this month, he went towards Uhud. Seventy of the companions and more had died in the battle of Uhud. The Mufti talked about it. And the Rasul is loyal. He never forgot the living nor the dead. So he went on the grave of the martyrs and the Ashab say he made such a passionate long dua, deep dua, that we saw in it traces of a goodbye not only to the dead but to the living. And then he gives a little hint that I will go before you, that I will bear testimony over you and I will meet you by my house. And this is the hikmah of the Rasul. He didn't drop it on the ummah, but let them understand bit by bit. And then towards the end of the same month, in the middle of the night, he sends to Abu Muwayhiba, Ya Abu Muwayhiba, O Abu Muwayhiba, إن الله تبارك وتعالى أمرني أن يستغفر لأهل هذا البقي فانطلق معي. The Lord has commanded that I ask for forgiveness for the dwellers of the graveyard of Medina, the Baqi. So come with me. So Abu Muwayhib came. The Rasul entered the cemetery, the graveyard of the believers. He greeted them as is the Sunnah. And then looking at the graves, he said, Glad tidings to you, all those that are buried. How fortunate are you compared to those that are living? Because calamities are about to be unleashed on the ummah. They will come wave after wave, one after another. The latter always worse than the former. Difficulties will come, challenges will come, calamities will come, problems will come. And then looking at Abu Muwayhiba, he says, Allah Rabbul Izza gave me the chance, the choice to live amidst my ummah, see them flourish and grow, and then meet my Lord. And he gave me the choice to opt to die and meet my Lord. So Abu Muwayhiba says, I opened my mouth to say, Bi Abi anta wa ummi ya Rasulullah. May my mom and dad be sacrificed for you, O Prophet. Choose to stay with the ummah. Watch the ummah grow. Give the ummah guidance. Advise them, caution them, lead them. But he said, I have opted to meet my Lord instead. So he came home, slept the night, Woke up the next day, it is Monday, the 29th of Safar. There's a funeral in the Baqi. The Rasul followed it. As he turned out from the funeral, a severe headache gripped him and a fever caught him. And overwhelmed, he went to inform his wives. He entered the house of our mother Aisha and she is crying, Wa ra'sa, ah, my head. Her head is hurting. She has a headache. So the Rasul said, Bal ana wa ra'sa ya Aisha. O Aisha, my head is the one that hurts. 
And with this sickness, and they say the heat was so intense that you could put your hand on the blessed turban of the Rasul and your hand would feel the heat. With this heat and with this fever and with this headache, the Prophet wasallam, the example of stamina and strength and resilience, continues with his daily chores. He leads the salah, he advises, he judges, he meets delegates, he, he, uh, the uh, normal head of state. The Monday passed, the Tuesday passed, the th Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the whole week passed and the Rasul's pain is increasing bit by bit and the fever is increasing and it's taking a toll on the health and, and strength of the Rasul and the second week came and the Rasul is worn out. So he starts to ask, where am I tomorrow? Whose house, as in which one of my wives am I with tomorrow? And he kept on asking so they realized that he is hinting that there, I want to, there's somewhere I want to be. So they said, be wherever you want to, Prophet of Allah. So with the adab befitting a Rasul, he said, if you permit, I will stay with Aisha. So his cousin Fadl ibn Abbas and Ali ibn Abi Talib came under his arms and dragging the Rasul. They say his blessed feet were dragging. He entered the house of our mother Aisha where he will live the last week of his life. So the days passed and now it is a Wednesday and the week that he is in the house of Aisha, the second week of his sickness. A severe pain gripped him, fever is sky high. So he said, gather water from the seven wells of Medina and pour it upon me. They set him down, they poured the cold water on him. They tied his head. The Ashab carried him, went under him, took him to the masjid. Before the Salat of Zuhr, he sat on the, mas on the member and he gave his parting advices to the Ummah. And these are his advices, Muslims hearken on to the lessons that the Rasul gave. He said, O Muslims, Allah cursed the nations that preceded you because they took the graves of their prophets as objects of worship. Don't take my grave as an object of worship. And my beloved brethren and sisters, if the, if the Rasul ordered you explicitly not to take his grave as an object of worship, no one else's grave will qualify. And then he sallallahu alayhi wasallam set the standards of justice. Understanding that the ajal is near, he says, if there is anyone here that I have harmed, that I have insulted, that I have dishonored, here I am, ready to take the insult, ready to take this honor. Come and take your retribution. If there's anyone I have struck, he is my back. Come and strike it. Take your retribution. Don't ask it of me in the court of Allah Rabbul Izza. If there's anyone I owe money, ask it now. I will grant it. Don't ask for it in the court of the Dhul Arsh al Majid. There's the stories here. Ukasha, radiallahu anhu, Ardah, stood up, O Prophet of Allah, in this battle you struck me, you, po you poked me in my stomach. So the Ashab are emotional, the Prophet is sick. So, and he goes, I want retribution. I want my qisas. So the Ashab stood up. Ya Ukasha, the Rasul is ill. Take your retribution from us. He said, no, the Rasul did it. I will take the retribution from him. So the Rasul stood. He said, on that day, my, my chest was naked. Yours is not naked. So the Rasul moved the guard. Ukasha came, fell on the chest of the Rasul and kissed it. And he said, this might be the last interaction between me and you. I wanted my skin to touch yours before, before the break or before the departure. 
the salah was performed, the Rasul gave the same advice after the salah, then went home. Wednesday finished, he performed the salawat still. Thursday came, the Rasul performed the fajr and the dhuhr with an acute sickness. The asr and the maghrib, and they say he read wal mursalati urfa in the salat of maghrib. In isha, he got up and fainted. So the, they poured water on him, waited for him to come back to consciousness. He said, have they prayed? They said, no, who will pray when the, when the Rasul is here? So he said, put water on me. They washed him. They prepared him, got up to go, fell again unconscious, woke up from consciousness. Have they prayed? No, Ya Rasul, they're waiting for you. So, so put water on me. And three times he fainted. Next time he got up, he said, order Abu Bakr to lead the salah. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu led the salah of Thursday and the Friday. And on Saturday or on Sunday, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam felt a little bit better. And Abu Bakr is in salah. And the Ummah is standing, can you see this masjid? There's an Abu Bakr Siddiq, and an Umar Al-Farooq, and an Dhul Nurayn Uthman, and an Ali ibn Abi Talib. They are teachers who teach, compare with this teacher, what have you produced and what did this produce? The best of the creation after the prophets are the students of the Rasul. The mosque is filled with them. So the Rasul came and look at the adab of the Ashab. <coughs> Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu noticed that the Prophet has come in. He heard a commotion and murmur at the back. So adaban he moved back and the Rasul placed his hand on his shoulders, pushed him forward, sat next to him and seated the, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, watched the Prophet. And as he would go down and move, Abu Bakr would make the call. And this day finished, the Rasul went back and uh, relapsed into a little illness. And then now today is the day of Monday. Two weeks after the start of the sickness, the Muslims have gathered after the Adhan of Fajr. The mosque is filled with the product of the hands of Muhammad. He is watching that 23 years later, there is a jeel of people, a generation created, molded, trained, taught by the end of this, the chain of prophethood. And as they stand, they're standing lined up to pray, the Rasul moved the curtain of the house of Aisha, which opens into, this, into the masjid. And he is feeling better, and his face is radiant. And the Ashab caught a glimpse of him. And they say, we almost broke our salah, Faraham bi Rasulillah, that alhamdulillah. The light of Medina has come back on. The Rasul looks good. His face looks radiant. He just motioned, continue. It is like a father on his deathbed looking at well-raised children, happy at his achievement and looking forward to their progress. So when the Salah finished, they came to him. Ya Rasul, you're looking good. He says, Alhamdulillah, I feel good. So the Ashab took this as, as a good sign. The Rasul will recover now. Good days will come again. So the Ashab asked for their permissions. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, Ya Rasul, can I visit my family at the outskirts of Medina? The Rasul said, go. Others came. And as they went, and the sun starts to rise, the illness gripped the Rasul again. And now it is severe and intense, and the Rasul is weak. 
So Ahmad Aisha called him close and placed his head, his head, blessed head. The hadith says, Bayna Sahri wa Nahri, between on my chest. And his wives gathered and he summoned his daughter, Fatima radiallahu anha. She entered the house seeing her father. And she says, Wa karuba abata. Oh, the trials of my father. So he said, La karuba ala abi kabad al yom. After this, there won't be any more calamities on your father. Then he called her. She came near. He whispered in her ears. And she started to sob bitterly. Seeing her cry, he called her again whispered again and she smiled Ahmad Aisha asked her what did he tell you after his death he said he called me first and he said he said it looks like the ajal is near Jibreel made me recite the Quran twice this year. This might be the final sickness. So she cried. And then seeing her cry, he said, Aren't you pleased, O Fatima, that you will be the queen of the Muslim women of Jannah? So she smiled. And in another narration, that you will be the first of my family to join me. And as they seated, the sun has come up towards the time of Duha. And at the door is Aisha's brother has just come in. In his hand is a siwak. So the Rasul looked at it and Aisha understood. Do you want the siwak, O Rasul? He nodded. She asked for the siwak. She softened it with her mouth and then brushed his teeth. And there was a little pot of water. He used to touch his hand on it and rub it on his face. And as the illness intensified, he rubs his hand on the water and rubs it on his face. And then Ahmad Aisha says, he looked up towards the ceiling and his eyes fixated. And then I heard him say, Allahumma rafiq al-a'la. Allahumma rafiq al-a'la. Oh Allah, I choose the companionship of the ones most high. So she says, in my translation, the heart must have broken. She says, I realized that now he has chosen the akhirah. And putting his hand in the water, he keeps on uttering, La ilaha illallah, inna lil mawti sakarat. La ilaha illallah, inna lil mawti sakarat. And then the hand of the Rasul fell. And the beloved of Allah passed away. The last of the prophets left this world. When a person dies, only those that are around can relate to the pain, but this wasn't an order, this was the Rasul of Allah. The heartache, the tears, the sorrow, the grief. Anas ibn Malik says, the happiest day was when he entered the city. The brightest day was when he entered the city. And the darkest day was when he sallallahu alayhi wasallam left and passed away. As he died, Hafsa sent for her father, Umar ibn al-Khattab. News started to trickle out of the house that the Prophet has passed away. Aisha sent for her father, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. But the first to enter the house after the death of the Rasul is Umar ibn al-Khattab. And the wives are seated. So he knocks, asks permission from Aisha. She asked, she allowed him to enter. The wives covered. And with him, with Umar, 
is Mughira ibn Shu'ba. So Umar enters in total denial, disbelief, can't accept that the Rasul would have. How do you accept that the Rasul passed away? So he looks at him and says, Wa Ghashia, Wa Ghashia, Wa Ghashia. Oh, how you have fainted. Oh, you're so unconscious. You're so unconscious. And then he turned around and walked out. So Mughira says, Ya Umar, Mata Rasulullah. Umar, the Prophet has died. So Umar said, Kadabt, you're lying. Innaka rajulun tahusuka fitna. You're a man engulfed in fitna. The Prophet hasn't died. And as he heard more and more the news that the Rasul has died, the, he became emotional and took his sword. Whoever says that the Prophet has died, I will cut off his head. And Uthman ibn Affan became numb. Ali ibn Abi Talib fell on, his, on the ground. And in this process, bewilderment has gripped everyone. What is happening? And the, and the, the reality is too difficult to consume. And the hope to faint, to hold on to. And in this commotion, Abu Bakr Siddiq enters the city and knocks at the house, asks permission to enter. The wives of the Rasul cover. He enters, goes to the blessed body of the Rasul, and looking at him says, Wa Khalila, ah, my dear friend. Wa Khalila. And then he says, Wa Safiya, oh, the one who was chosen by the heavens, Wa Safiya. And then he says, Wa Nabiya, oh, the messenger of Allah. And then he kissed his forehead and said, The death that Allah wrote for you, you have tasted it. And Allah will not let you die twice in what the son of Khattab says is not correct. So he came out of the house, entered the masjid, and people see Abu Bakr enter, and Umar is screaming. So Abu Bakr said, Ijlis ya Umar, ala rislika ya Umar, sit Umar, and Umar won't listen. So Abu Bakr walked to the member, stood up, and gave his timeless words of advice. O Muslims, if you worshipped Allah, if you worshipped Muhammad, understand that Muhammad has died. And if you worshipped Allah, Allah is eternal and doesn't die. And then he recited the verse. And Muhammad is not but a messenger. قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُلِ Before him messengers were created. أَفَإِمَّا قَلَبْتُمْ عَلَىٰ أَعْقَابِكُمْ If he were to die, or is killed, would you turn back on your heels? Would you leave the deen? Would you go astray? So Umar said, that, Ya Abu Bakr, is this in the Quran? He says, it is as though it is the first time I heard it. We never imagined that the Rasul would pass away. So Abu Bakr says, yes. And Allah Rabbul Izzah says, Innaka mayyitun wa innahum mayyitun. So Umar fell onto the ground. And the Prophet of Allah passed away. My dear brothers and sisters, these are the last moments of the life of the Rasul. And I look around and there's a lot of emotions. And my dear brothers, the outcome isn't only to cry and miss and long for the Rasul, but to keep the sunnah of the Prophet alive and you have heard so many lessons to keep alive. May Allah grant me and you the capacity to embody the teachings of the Rasul. And although we missed out on seeing the majestic face and the beautiful presence of this Rasul, may Allah Rabbul Izzah, not out of merit or qualification that we have, but out of his bounty, give us that companionship in Jannah. And may Allah Rabbul Izzah resurrect us with His Majesty pleased with us and the Prophet proud of us for your patience 
and kindness, I thank you. May the heavens guide and guard you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.